Hi there, I'm Eddie Matthews from the Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce. New Year, and the landscape is still the same, but uh, boy, if you look at the polls, have they ever changed a lot? It's a pleasure to welcome Perth Wellington MP John Nader. Good to see you, John, and all the best for 2024 to you and yours. Thank you, Eddie. Great to see you too, and uh, happy New Year, happy 2024. Hope uh, hope is a good year for you and and all the chamber members. I, I hope so. I really do hope so. And because there's well, we'll we'll talk about this in just a little bit too, because uh, it is a double-edged sword with so many different things. Because for one, the polls are showing the Conservatives would win an election if it were held today. <laughs> However, we don't really have one scheduled for about a year or so. So. Uh, how do you keep up that momentum of going after the government? I mean, it, no question, it's a challenge. You know, in a minority parliament, there's always a chance of an election at any time. Um, obviously, with the uh, the NDP Liberal uh, agreement, it makes it unlikely that it, there'll be an election in 2024. Uh, so probably looking at 2025. But uh, never say never. Things happen, and then we could find ourselves uh, into an election at, uh, at at any minute. So, um, but basically, you know, where where my my perspective is, where my focus is, is uh, uh, being ready at all times for an election. But uh, in the meantime, serving the people here uh, as as best I can. So. Yeah. Um, you know, responding to those concerns from, from local business owners, from uh, community members, from individuals who who may be struggling right now, uh, given uh, a lot of uh, a lot of challenges facing them from an economic standpoint. Yeah, there is there's such a big laundry list right now when we look at it. You know, we've got immigration, housing, carbon tax, just the cost of living in this country. You must hear from people and especially businesses daily, especially now that the loans have to be repaid by businesses. Is there any advice or anything that, that you can offer some of these businesses right now? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a it's a real challenge. I mean, uh, right before Christmas, I, I met with a number of local businesses here in Stratford and, and surrounding area about about specifically those challenges with the SIBA loans, uh, uh, you know, coming due and now in, in in basically a number of days. And and you know, the, the crazy thing is, is that you know, there's a lot of folks out there who who are, who are in a position where they're back on their feet, but they're not really doing you know as as well as they did pre-pandemic. So they're they're getting back, they're getting settled, and now all of a sudden they're hit with this uh, SIBA loan repayment, and if they don't repay it within a number of days they lose that forgivable portion and the double-edged sword you know talked about that double-edged sword earlier it's a it's a, it's a double impact right now because this you know if you don't pay you lose that uh, lose that forgivable portion but the added uh, uh, negative side of things right now is that uh, interest rates have gone up and so we have so many local business owners who um, are looking for alternative financing to be able to, uh, you know, to to float this loan, to be able to uh, to get through things. Um, but the interest rates alone are, uh, are are so so much higher than they were uh, even uh, even a year and a half ago. And so it makes it uh, uh, not only are they facing this loss of uh, between ten and twenty thousand for the SIBA loan, uh, they're also facing a higher interest rates to repay what uh, what might be left. So it's it's a really difficult situation. Uh, um, back uh, back in the early fall, you know, I was advocating for some kind of flexibility uh, for these local business owners to have some uh, some uh, some you know leeway. Um, you know, the government did make some some concessions to make some changes, but um, really only pushed it back uh, less than uh, less than three weeks. And you know, here we are coming in on uh, on January eighteenth. And uh, you know, the interesting thing is talking to these business owners. You know, to a person, they all want to repay. They all want to repay because it means their businesses are still still surviving. Uh, that's what they want to do. Uh, they just need some flexibility, and unfortunately, that flexibility hasn't come through. Um, so it's a real challenge of trying to uh, to work with different financial institutions. Yeah. To, to in in Stratford, over the past six months, we've lost nine restaurants. That's that's got to hurt for a city that that relies on tourism. One hundred percent, Eddie. You know, you you talk about the tourism ecosystem. You need all parts of it be functioning and, and happening. So you need the restaurants, you need the hotels, you need the bed and breakfast, and then you need the tourism uh, att attractions. And if you're losing part of that, you're losing a huge part of that ecosystem. So if people can't come here, have a place to stay, have a place to eat, have an entertainment uh, venue to go to, they're not going to come here. So by when you start losing those businesses, those uh, heart and soul businesses that have been part of our downtown, part of our main streets uh, for so long it, it's a real uh, a real blow to the economy and a real blow to the entire uh, tourism ecosystem here yeah um infrastructure that's another thing that we've seen not only in stratford but in in st mary's and around the area infrastructure funding by the federal government uh, put it it's fallen short when it comes to areas like like perth county uh, what's your feeling are 
I know that you've been a little bit dissatisfied with uh, with the federal government's funding approach, but this does have a bearing on small and rural communities. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, the big thing is, is that small communities, rural communities are different than larger urban centers. And so there, there, you know, there's this expectation from the federal government that they can spend massive amounts of uh, people time doing these applications, doing these funding proposals, just to be beat out by the Mississaugas, the Ottawa's, the Hamiltons, the Toronto's uh, of the world. Uh, one of the one of the examples that uh, came about this past year was the uh, the half funding, the uh, uh, the the housing accelerator fund. Um, HAF is the, is the acronym. So any community over 10,000 was considered large urban. So you have places like Perth East, you know, Milverton, you know, Bruner being considered a large urban municipality. Even Stratford was considered a large urban municipality. Certainly it's larger than, than Bruner, but it's not the large urban center that you think of. And so when they're applying for this funding through the HALF, through the Housing Accelerator Fund, they're competing against these large urban centers who have the time, the resources to do these applications. And frankly, our local municipalities are, 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 are going a mile a minute to do the best they can um, but these are applications that you know the CAO or the clerk or the treasurer is trying to do off the corner of their desk when they have all their other responsibilities they don't have dedicated uh, grant writing teams to, to do this so one of the arguments I keep putting forward is make it more uh, more flexible and make it uh, based on a, on a formula like like the gas tax fund where municipalities can access the funds and tailor it to their their local priorities and you know when you look at communities uh, in, in Perth Wellington in, in our smaller rural ones uh, there are a lot of priorities that they can focus on that would benefit housing in the long term one of the things that uh, I hear all the time from uh, local mayors is uh, is wastewater projects it's huge massive uh, financial in, uh, undertaking but by investing in that, that, uh, that area to, go, to do those wastewater and water projects, you can expand housing, you can uh, expand the development areas so that you can have uh, more houses being built in, in our smaller communities within the existing uh, urban boundaries. Mm -hmm. you, you almost need someone who specializes in it. I've, I've seen, <laughs> I was just looking over some, some tax stuff, it's on my desk right now, and I'm like a deer in the headlight when, when you're looking at not only the, the tax forms, but the grant forms that you have to fill up. You need someone that almost can specialize in that sort of thing. No, absolutely. And that's a challenge we, we face. You know, when you have some communities who have grant writing teams, yeah. so, you know, folks in, in our, our rural communities who are doing it off the corner of their desk, it's just not a, not a fair, um, fair uh, ex, you know, splitting of funds when, uh, when you have that. Uh, well, it's the terminology too, you know, you, is there a difference between the infrastructure funding and and the Canada Community Building Fund? Are those two separate things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. So it's two different uh, two different streams, and 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 that's the thing. And then you have uh, re you have programs getting renamed it all the time, and uh, they're really the same programs. And so you have all these different uh, avenues, all these different venues, and you need a, a roadmap just to find which one you're going to yeah. use for, uh, for different programs. Yeah, I just find it very and. This is, I, I know it's not, not in my specialty, but, but when you've got businesses that are looking at it, they must be looking at this the same way as, and who do you, who do you talk to about it? It may not be for a lawyer, but it's somebody that, that deals with this on a regular basis. Oh, absolutely. And that's why you see some municipalities now uh, hiring um, um consulting groups to uh, to help them with their applications and, you know yes you bring in that expertise from these uh, different consulting firms but at the same time it also costs money and uh, you're not always guaranteed to be successful with every every grant so you're spending money hoping to receive um, some of the grants in the long run but uh, it's uh, it's not always uh, not always in your favor so it's, it's it's a real significant challenge yeah hey before I let you go what are you working on for 2024 I know last year you did a great thing with uh, getting getting a new bill passed for National Food Day in this country. What what does 2024 look like for you and what are you working on? What's well, on so your the, dinner the, plate right now? Yeah, so in the, in the short term, uh, uh, we're working on our pre-budget consultations for the uh, upcoming federal budget. So each year I uh, I try to make a concerted effort to kind of get some of the concerns and views of, of the community, uh, municipalities, what's what's the big issues, what they would like to see uh, coming up to uh, to budget 2024. So uh, that's kind of what's uh, what's happening in the next uh, next 68 weeks uh, prior to leading up to the budget. So if anyone has some suggestions of what they want to see uh, in, in the federal budget, please uh, please let me know. I'm always uh, always happy to hear that, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, feedback. And then uh, later, 
later in, in the spring, hopefully in uh, June, the Father's Day weekend, we'll be doing our second annual Dodge for Dads event uh, in support of, uh, of, of mental health. So that's uh, our, annual, our now second annual dodgeball tournament to, to raise funds for, for mental health. So really looking forward to that as, uh, that as well uh, coming up. Really later. Any, any little things that you've heard about the budget that, uh, that we should be concerned about? Well, there's always a lot of gossip uh, and uh, and uh, speculation going on with the budget. Uh, obviously, what I'll be looking for in the budget is uh, how it affects our, our our small rural communities. How that, you know, like we talked about earlier, how that infrastructure funding will will roll out. How those housing uh, funds will roll out. How it'll affect small business owners. How it'll affect uh, individuals living in our area. So that's what I'll be focusing on. Okay. Um, in terms of speculation, there's lots out there, and uh, I wouldn't want to <laughs> wouldn't want to hazard a guess too much on it. Right. Hey, if anybody does have questions. Questions, concerns, can they get a hold of your staff? Absolutely. Give us a call anytime, 519-273-1400 or uh, online, johnnader.ca. All our contact information is there. Uh, give us a shout anytime if there's anything we need of assistance of or something you just want to make us aware of. Always appreciate having yeah. people. Yeah, it's always good. And, and John's got a great staff that he, he deals with. So, John, thank you for all that you've been doing. And, and we'll look forward to seeing you in person in the near future, I hope. Okay. My pleasure. Thanks, Eddie. Always great to chat. Good to talk to you. That's John Nader. I'm Eddie Matthews from the Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for watching.